On today's episode, Bell's big tilt rotor win may be a turning point in aviation. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. The aerospace industry is a business, and like any business, the prospect of major contracts, well, that makes engineers sit up and take notice. With a long-range projected market of 60 to $90 billion, the U.S. military's need for advanced vertical takeoff, attack, and transport helicopters has boiled down to a classic matchup between two American helicopter heavyweights, the Lockheed Martin Boeing Consortium and Bell. Now, Boeing's a parent company of Sikorsky, who, along with Bell, founded the helicopter industry 75 years ago. And Sikorsky makes the Blackhawk, which has been in service for some three decades. Now, all good things come to an end, and as the Blackhawk nears the end of its service life, the potentially huge contract for high-performance replacements well, it's a race between an advanced coaxial rotor compound helicopter from the Lockheed Boeing team and Bell's tilt rotor design. The competition is the U.S. Army's future long-range assault aircraft program, with a sizable billion-plus dollars on the line just to get an aircraft into production ready form. Bell's tilt rotor, the V-280 Valor, has won that contest with a lightweight tilt rotor that can carry a crew of four and 14 troops up to 900 miles with 320 mile per hour cruise speed. Externally, it can lift a 10,000 pound load. Now those are impressive numbers. It's easy to see why the Army is excited about the prospect of moving people and cargo with the best of fixed wing and rotary wing performance in one airframe. What isn't being discussed, however, is the potential for this technology to really shake up civil aviation. The current service tilt rotor, the V-22 Osprey, well, was a controversial product plagued by program delays, cost overruns, and several high-profile crashes. Now, these had the effect of squashing civilian interest in the technology, although in Europe, the Leonardo AW609 is going after the executive transport market with a similar machine. The Osprey experience shows that tilt rotors do indeed work, although in civilian service, the situation is a lot more complex than just hauling troops and howitzers. The applications of this technology in civil airspace are obvious, from downtown to international airport shuttles to true city-to-city -city transport at turboprop speeds without the need for runways. But to deliver this service, several problems have to be resolved. Certification of civilian tilt rotors is feasible as the Leonardo team has paved the way forward, but pilot training and certification will likely mean some form of special endorsement or specialized training for helicopter pilots, perhaps over and above type rating. Support and maintenance for line operations will have to be calculated, from non-destructive testing procedures to mean time between failures overhaul strategy that prevents these things from becoming hangar queens. And of course, upfront procurement and seat mile costs must be competitive with existing large helicopters. Passenger carrying helicopters are a mature technology and they got that way on the back of decades of military experience with rotary wing aircraft. Along with that experience came a steady stream of trained helicopter technicians and pilots from the armed forces, forming a core cadre of people necessary to make civilian operations work. Currently, there are very few qualified people in the cockpit or on the line coming out of the V-22 Osprey program, but if the V-280 Valor is procured in the kinds of numbers that the Army wants to replace the Black Hawk, there will be a considerable number of people trained on tilt rotor technology. If this project creates the regulatory regime to make it work, and the people are in place, all that's left for a company like Bell is to certify the Valor or a lightweight variant for civilian use and potentially open the door to an entirely new type of airline service. Now, it's unknown at this time if the Rolls-Royce power plants used in the Valor will be suitable for airline use, where time on wing is critical, but hundreds of these things in the hands of the U.S. Army is going to be a massive test program for tilt rotor technology. And when I look at the nightmare that represents large airports and modern air travel in general, the thought of boarding an aircraft from a rooftop downtown, then flying to another rooftop in another city looks pretty promising. And I think I'd pay a premium price to experience it. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For our deeper engineering video series for the manufacturing professional, visit engineering.com TV to watch exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, not found here on our YouTube channel. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.